Introduction to Chemical Management It is common for factories to contain a variety of chemicals, and many are hazardous and stored in large quantities. <gasps> Exposure to toxic chemicals can lead to serious health problems, such as cancer, nervous system disorders, organ damage, <laughs> asthma, etc. And chemicals can cause irritation to the skin, eyes, nose, and throat. This can all result in lost productivity and an increase in worker absenteeism and illness. Some chemicals <gasps> even have fire and explosion risks. Accidents involving chemicals create additional costs companies in terms of lost materials, damaged equipment and facilities, and personal injuries or even death. Therefore, suppliers must be very careful in how they store, label, secure, transport and use chemicals. Properly managed chemicals will help safeguard the health and safety of workers, Avoid expenses from disposal, loss, waste, <gasps> and expiry of materials, spills, and other incidents, including potential liability in lawsuits, and costly closures associated with emergency incidents. Concern for chemical safety can maintain a sense of trust in the community prevent damage to the environment in which workers live, and in general, help secure a healthier and safer surrounding. Assess. The key to understanding what can happen at your factory is to assess your chemical risks. It is important to assess the life cycle of all chemicals, whether or not they are purchased wisely, stored safely, handled carefully, used responsibly, and disposed of properly. An Environmental Health and Safety EHS committee should be formed to include management, workers, and at least one qualified occupational health and safety officer who is trained to oversee chemical management activities. It is essential that the committee conducts regular walkthroughs of the entire facility to identify hot spots and to follow the flow of chemicals through their life cycle. Noting any chemical spills, lids that are not tightly sealed, chemical containers that are dented, damaged or defective, packaging that shows leakage, containers without labels, expired inventory, etc. These hot spots are places where the improper handling of chemicals is observed and where there are opportunities for improvement. Usually, appropriate control measures can be implemented immediately to reduce risks. The committee should monitor its chemical inventory levels and expiry dates on a monthly basis, and members be given time to attend meetings to discuss chemical concerns. It should be familiar with the facility's current chemical inventory, know the properties of all the chemicals stored, able to prepare training programs on hazardous chemical management and safety, for example, on how to handle certain chemicals, respond to a spill or release, understand the hazards of these materials, etc., use and care for PPE, and share information on or report potential dangers. Manage. Now that you have assessed your facility and its potential hazards, it is time to design and communicate 
chemical management policies that reflect the local government's regulations for your facility. Most importantly, your factory's hazardous chemical control policy should adopt the following measures in order of priority. Number one, elimination. Eliminate the need for or use of hazardous chemicals from work processes. Number two, substitution. Use less hazardous and more environmentally responsible chemicals. Number three, engineering controls. Alter work environments to reduce exposure to hazardous chemicals by providing proper containment and ventilation, for example. And four, administrative controls. Provide appropriate training and protection for your employees. If elimination and substitution are not possible, your factory should have effective engineering and administrative controls. All employees that handle chemicals should be trained on best practices for chemical management and the chemical policy should address proper methods for purchasing, and tracking, storing and labeling. And note that storage is particularly important for flammable chemicals. And handling and disposing of chemicals. Chemicals should always be purchased from vendors holding relevant legal licenses and permits and incoming chemicals must be tested periodically to ascertain the content. When the chemicals are received, staff should immediately document them. Update the inventory to systematically identify all chemical substances stored and in use for production and create a structured chemical inventory table. Once a comprehensive chemical inventory is completed, this can be used as a benchmark for making improvements on a continual basis. An accurate inventory helps you organize which chemicals should and should not be in particular areas. And also identify chemicals that are expired, wasted, and or contaminated. The proper storage of chemicals can help minimize risk and ensure that incompatible chemicals are not stored together. All chemicals, including those in secondary containers, must be properly labeled in the worker's own language and stored in designated areas that are weather protected and well ventilated. Explosion proof equipment and lighting should be used in areas where flammable or combustible chemicals and pressurized containers are stored. And reactive chemicals must be stored in areas that reduce the possibility of reactions. Use approved fireproof storage lockers or containers to store flammable and combustible liquids. Secondary containers must be sufficient to hold 110% of the volume of the chemical contained. If spill containment areas are used, the area must be sufficient to hold 110% of the total volume of the chemicals. Some chemicals must be bonded and grounded to eliminate the potential buildup of static electricity and possible sparks that can cause a flash fire if there is a flammable mixture of fuel and air. Proper labels must be placed on all containers with warning signs in all storage areas to alert workers of the dangers and basic safety precautions. Workers that handle and use chemicals must have quick access to eye washing stations, spill control kits, fire safety equipment, and emergency phones with contact numbers posted. All these should be adequate and properly maintained. Suppliers should ensure appropriate PPE is provided for hazardous and dangerous work activities. And workers should be trained and competent in using and storing PPE. PPE should be changed at recommended intervals or when it is damaged. And those who are exposed to hazardous work shall undergo medical examinations at the expense of the supplier and as required by law. 
Material Safety Data Sheets, MSDS, along with accurate inventory maintenance and documentation must be kept near the chemicals. MSDS give important information on chemical contents, potential health effects, as well as procedures for the proper handling, storing, transporting, and disposing of specific chemicals. Disposal facilities are designed to contain waste and prevent the release of harmful pollutants to the environment. Therefore, ensure all wastes are disposed of in accordance with local regulations and by licensed vendors, and that disposal is only taking place at government-designated disposal sites. Also, create emergency response plans for spill cleanups. When possible, substitute hazardous chemicals with less or non-hazardous substances that serve the same function. Always adhere to the Restricted Substance List RSL, required by consumers' countries. For more detailed instructions on chemical safety, review the LF Supplier Compliance Manual.